Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember you being quite fluent the day we met. And that was a strange day when we met. And we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. But let's touch on music. I, I see you as a professional musician. You're incredible at composing playing music in many styles. You can play piano, saxophone. And yeah, I believe music is a source of ikigai for you. I've seen you play. And, and when you play, you seem to lose yourself and you slip into this flow state. So is music a strong source of ikigai for you? Absolutely. I'm um, deeply moved by the sound I create. And it becomes a powerful source of ikigai for me. Nice. Well, as you know, <laughs> I've been running this podcast and business on ikigai for a while. And I, I guess it's it's quite unusual for Japanese to think, oh, here's someone doing a podcast and they've got a business related to the concept. So how do you understand ikigai? And what does the word mean to you? Because... I don't think we ever discussed it. We discussed other words, but not ikigai. So what does the word mean to you? Um, I guess ikigai is the purpose of life. Though, as I get older, I realize the purpose of life is to find small joys in daily life and be moved by them. Now, when I was younger, I only felt ikigai when I achieve a goal or something. Mm. That's interesting you say that because when we met, we were very ambitious and purpose-driven or goal-driven, and we achieved quite a lot together. But I'm, I think I'm very like you in that regard, that the small things in life add up to a meaningful life. And, yeah, <laughs> I guess when you're young, you have this ambition and think, oh, if I achieve this goal, that's it. Life will be perfect. <laughs> and <laughs> we know that's yeah, not yeah. the case. But the, the journey of achieving the goal is often very um, life-changing. <laughs> yeah. 